Hi, welcome to this video on KNX programming. Um, this video is going to show you how to make changes to a KNX system uh, when you have no idea how the underlying um, KNX system is set up or, or how the project has been programmed. Um, so an example might be if you've just moved in somewhere and um, there's a KNX system there or you've had one installed but it's too big, you don't have a, a professional license and there are too many devices on the bus for you to open up the project which the installers uh, given you. So in my instance what I have is I've got a, a light switch which I want to reprogram to switch on a different light to the one that it's already switching on. So I'm going to show you how to do that but this can be kind of extended to any device uh, that you have. So first things first is open up ETS5. Um, I'm going to assume that you've got a light license. Um, you have to go through the, the training, um, but you can get a substantial discount um, from the KNX Association for the light license. And this allows you to open projects with up to 20 devices, which actually makes it a reasonably useful, uh, useful tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a new project. Let's switch one. I'm going to create a new project and uh, it opens up. Now you can see there's no information in here. So the first thing we want to do is identify the uh, programming address for that device that we want to reprogram. So I'm going to do that by opening up the Diagnostics tab here. Just make this a little bit larger. And I'm going to um, put, I'm going to do the, um, look for individual addresses which are in programming mode. And I'm just going to start that. And you can see at the moment there are no devices on the bus which are in programming mode. So I'm just going to go and press the programming button on the device um, so that we can discover what its address is. So I've clicked the little programming button on that device uh, on the light switch itself and you can see that its uh, individual programming address is 1.1 um, 0.65. So we're going to make a just jot that down and then we'll stop that. So now we've discovered the programming address for the light switch. Uh, the next thing to do is to discover what the group address is that we're going to program to it. So to do that, we open up the diagnostics toolkit. Uh, let me just open that up a little bit more. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the group monitor function. And I know that there's there's already a light switch which turns on the light that I want, which is different from the light switch which we're reprogramming. So to discover what the group address is um, for that particular light, I'm, I'm going to run the group monitor, switch on the light switch for the uh, of the light, the light switch that switches on the light that I want to know, and we'll see um, what the group address is for that. So I'm just going to start the bus and go and turn that on. I'll turn it on. And turn it off again. Right, so let's see what we have here. So we have, um, it's these two. Um, these two are just different um, uh, pieces of information which were uh, telegrams which are on the bus. Um, prior to that, this one's a temperature, I'm not sure what this one is. But this is the, um, the light switch uh, that I just switched on. This is the destination address. So you can see the value in, of info is on. And then we have 1.1.1, which in this case is the lighting actuator, has sent back a 1 for, uh, sent back to the group address 1411 and on. And this is the feedback um, uh, telegram. And then where I turned uh, the light switch off, you can see this is the source address for the light switch. Again, it's the same destination address, but this time the value is off. And again, the next bit of information is the feedback from the actuator um, saying that uh, this uh, that this is now off. So we're going to jot down one for ten, um, because that this is the uh, um, the destination, the group address that we we want to program for our light switch. Okay, so the, we're going to close that down, get rid of that, make a little bit more space. So um, first thing we want to do then um, is we're going to uh, create that uh, group address. Um, that we want to uh, to uh, the program. Sorry, we're going to create the programming address for the device. So first things first, we're going to uh, create a house. We're going to add building parts, and then we're, within the house, we're going to add upstairs, um, and then an 
upstairs, we're gonna add a room, which is my office. And then here now in my office, we can now add the devices, which is the light switch that we're interested in. So uh, in this case, it's a one gang uh, young uh, switch. So we're just gonna grab that over there and drop that in. And so you can see that we have this one device in here. It has one um, channel at the moment, uh, rocker switching. And you can see that we have uh, um, group objects and parameters. I'll just get rid of the catalog now that we've done that. And what we can do with this is now we can use the parameters and this allows you to change the general function of the, uh, the object, in this case, the, the switch. Um, so the operation concept is that it's in a rocker, but if we had, we can change it to a button so that, um, you know, if you press the top of the rocker, it turns uh, things on. If you turn, press the bottom, it turns off. When you press that, what you'll notice here is that you get extra channels uh, added, uh, which are for the different group addresses. So you could have one group address for when you press the top of the button, one group address for the bottom. Um, you can also uh, have this, each button can be configured um, at the moment it's switching, um, but we can have it as dimming. And again, if I put that as dimming, uh, you can see we get an extra channel, which is to send the value um, for um, the, the dimming value to, so that add an, an, another group address to that, and so on. And so you can you can configure the device in any which way you want. In this case, we're just going to have a very simple uh, switch, and I'm just going to have it as a rocker. So all we have is one channel, which we can apply one group address to. And we know what that group address is, it's 1, 4, 10. So we, once you've set up the object in the way that you want it to, and it, 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 depending on the complexity of the device, it can take some time to figure out how you might want to configure things. Um, you know, and you just have to read the manual and try and figure out what it is that you want to want to do with that device. So now we've set it up, um, what we need to do is associate the group address with this particular channel on the device. Now, what I'm going to do is open up the workplace and we're going to open up new panel and group addresses. Now, you can see here at the moment we've got no group addresses um, configured in, in here. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll add in, I'll create a group address, I'll create that group address. But one of the really useful things um, that you can do is you can import, if you right click on this, you can import group addresses. And this is really, really useful. Um, so if you can't open up a project, you will be able to, what, what you, let's say a, an installer uh, sends you a project, but there are too many devices and you can't um, open up that project. Uh, what you can do is you can go back to your uh, installer and say, can you send me, can you export the group addresses into a file? And they can do that and then you can import that file. So it, it basically means that all your uh, group addresses that are already in your installation um, will be just present here. But um, and I'll show you that in one of the uh, other videos that I do. But in this case, I'm just going to make a, a group address. So we're going to add the main groups, and that's this is the first level. And we're going to call this, uh, say, upstairs. You can change the name of these. But ours starts with a 1, so we're going to put a 1 in. Okay, and then we're upstairs, we're going to add a middle group. And this is probably the office. So I'm going to put office there, and we're going to start it with a 4. Oop, 4. And then finally, we're going to add the group address, which in, in, the, in our case was the light, and we want this to be uh, 10. So there we've got our group address uh, that's set up. Um, so once we've highlighted that, you can see that we have a, a number of different settings here. Uh, this is just going to be a switch, so I'm going to select that switch. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's all ready to, to go. We can add in... Uh, a little bit, you know, a few comments um, and settings uh, behind this. So now once we've done that and we've created our group address, we want to associate that with the channel that's in the device. So the device channel, um, we're going to associate with this um, uh, group address. So I'm just going to drag that over and drop it in there. And you can see now that if we select this, we can see the associations. We have our, um, our group address uh, on there. Um, and we're ready to go. So we've got the device set up as we want. We've made the association with the group addresses, and you've seen how we find the group addresses, and also how you, you know, how we create those, and how we um, uh, create the the device. One thing I realise I've not done here is that this device still has the its programming device uh, address of one point one point one, and we know that our device is one point or the switch on the wall is already one point one point six five. So by selecting that. 
Um, over on the right hand side, we can see here, we can change this to 65. So everything is now ready. Um, we've got the right address, we've got the right um, software all lined up, we've made the association in the appropriate channels, and now we're going to hit download. And we'll just hit download um, uh, individual address. And I get this error all the time, but I know that it works fine, and then we're going to keep keep searching. And you can see it's starting to download, but because I've not pushed this into programming, oh, more than one device in programming, and this is a this can be a little bit of a, a, a problem uh, sometimes. Um, if we go back to our, get rid of this group address and we'll pull up the diagnostic panel. And we'll have a look at, see which devices are in programming mode. And you can see 1.1.65 is in programming mode. Um, what I'm going to do, I, 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 this, this is quite a common um, uh, error. Um, so the best thing to do is to, first of all, um, get the, um, device information for 1.1.65 and we'll do that. Let's see if we can do that. There we go, you have to stop the programming mode. Um, so I'm going to select the device info and I'm going to read 1.1.65 just so I know what the um, uh, how it was originally set up. And you can see this is the, the information for 1.1.65, so you can see it's uh, the manufacturer, it's in programming mode, and these are the current uh, objects associated with it. And I'm just going to save this, save that to, uh, to desktop, and close that out. So that this is handy to do that if you want to check what, um, um, what, how the device is already configured when you start making changes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to unload this device because this is what's the source of this error. So we're just going to remove all the information from it. Oh, so we've got one world and one device is in program now. Okay, I'm just going to go and um, get rid of... Uh, I'm just going to push the programming device on 1.1.65. Done that, so it shouldn't be in programming mode any longer. And we'll press the programming button again. There we go. So that's now unloaded that device, and we'll check whether anything's in programming mode again. So nothing's in programming mode. Um, so we've got all our software and all the associations ready to download. So I'm going to select, select download all. Okay, it's starting to download, but of course no objects are in programming mode. So I'm going to go and press the programming button. So the device is now in programming mode, and the information has been downloaded to it. There we go, it says finished finish successfully. We'll just check on the office. You can see, you go up to the high level, it can tell you whether um, everything's been successful. So it's successfully uploaded the address, the program, uh, the group address, and so on. And you can see all those are ticks. That shows everything's loaded in fine. So that now, that um, device has now um, been updated um, with that new association. So when I press the button, the, the light that I want will now come on. And I'm just going to go and check that. Yeah, and sure enough, the uh, the light that I want now comes on. So that's how you uh, so that's how you make changes. Um, it can be a little bit uh, scary at first, um, but if you find the appropriate um, the address of the device um, by pushing it into programming mode and then using the uh, individual programming mode, you know, finding the programming mode, and then you um, find the group address um, for 
that, that you want to associate with the device using the, uh, the diagnostic um, group monitor um, functionality. And, and then also um, take the device info and store that so that you know if you make any, um, yeah, you, you know how the, the device was originally configured. So that concludes the, uh, this video. I'm going to um, show you, uh, uh, the, my next video shows how to make a, a more complex um, uh, KNX uh, installation or how to make changes to a more complex installation when you've got the uh, ETS Lite um, license. Hope you can join me there.